And we thank God for every part of the service that has taken place. We thank God for every song, every scripture, every prayer. We thank God for everything. Now we thank God for His word that is fixing to go forth. I want to say it's good to see each and every one of you here today. We thank God for each and every one of your presence and I believe that you were petitioned by the Holy Spirit to come and hear what thus said the Lord. So come and go with me to the book of Amos, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. Amos, chapter 3. Beginning at verse number one through the third verse, there is a word from the Lord. <clears throat> Amos, chapter three, beginning at verse number one. If you can, please stand for the reading of God's eternal and everlasting word. And it reads, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. To your children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Yeah. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Yeah. If you can two walk together, except they be agreed. This is the word of God. You may be seated. Yeah. Verse 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed. Huh. My beloved brothers and sisters, we want to use for a subject today walking with God. Amen. Uh -huh. Walking with God. Walking with God. And my beloved brothers and sisters, it is a privilege to walk with God. It is a privilege to know God. It is a privilege to serve God. Likewise, it is a privilege to walk with Jesus. It is a privilege to know Jesus. It is a honor and a privilege to have a position in Christ. And it is a privilege to be filled with the Spirit. It is a privilege to walk in the Spirit. It is a privilege to be Saved. It is a privilege to have God's word. And it is a privilege to be in God's presence. It is a privilege to be united with God. Yeah. Because it is a privilege or because it is a honor to walk with God. That we must have a great appreciation for this relationship. We must have a great respect for this relationship. We must have a great appreciation for this position. In other words, we can't take this walk for granted. But we must be grateful for this position. And we must have a great love for our fellowship with God. 
Can I tell you that it's not? Tell you I've been in the presence of dogs and, and you end up catching fleas that you really can appreciate being in the presence of God and catching the spirit. And it's not until you've been in the wrong company that you can appreciate being in the right company. It's not until you have been in bad company that you can appreciate being in good company. It's not until you've been in a storm that you can appreciate your sunny days. It's not until you've been in bondage that you can appreciate being free. It's not until you have been starving that you can appreciate having food on the table. It's not until you've been lied to time after time that you can appreciate the word of God. Not until you realize that you once were dead. That you can appreciate being alive. That all of us were dead men walking until we met Christ. And when you realize this, you can appreciate being saved. You can appreciate the blood. You can appreciate the cross. You can appreciate the sacrifice. Beloved, I'm here to tell you that there's no greater demonstration of love than the cross. That there's no greater demonstration of love than what Jesus did on the cross. So when we decide to walk with anything other than God, it shows a disappreciation for God. It shows a dishonor for God. I'm here to tell you that this walk must be taken seriously because God didn't have to give us his only son. God didn't have to have mercy on us. That God didn't have to shower us with grace. That Jesus didn't have to lead glory and personally get in a body to avenge us. But God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm here to tell you again, it's a privilege to serve God. It is a privilege to walk with God. It's a privilege to be in Christ. It's a privilege to be in good company. It's a privilege to be in the presence of God. So friends, in order to walk with God, we we must be in agreement with God. Can I help you understand what sin is? To be in sin is to be in disagreement with God. See, in order to walk with God, we we must be in harmony with God. And in order to be with God, we we must be in unity with God. In order to be with, to walk with God, we, we must be in the right formation. We have to run the place that God calls. Say, well, what do you mean Pastor Corey? Those of us that watch football. That when the teams line up to run a play, they are in what you call certain formations. And each position has to be lined up in their own spot. I'm going to tell you that the quarterback knows where everyone is supposed to be lined up. But I'm going to talk to you in the spiritual sense that Jesus is our quarterback. And he knows where everybody is supposed to be. And if we're going to be in formation, we have to make sure we're following Jesus. That Jesus is only going to do what God says. That Jesus is only going to run the place that God calls. To walk with God means there has been a merge. There has been a connection. There has been a Union. There has been a marriage between us and God. There is a covenant in place. So walking with God is respecting his word. Respecting his commandments.
men is respecting his position, respecting your position in Christ. And walking with God means we're walking in, walking with God is walking in obedience. Meaning we, we have to abandon self. Because I'm here to tell you, self will keep you in chains. That self will keep you in sin. That self will keep you broken. That self will keep you out of the will of God. That self will keep you in the wrong formation. I recall a scripture in the Bible, Genesis 5 and 24 tells us that Enoch walked with God. What does this mean? This means that he set aside his own carnal preferences. He set aside his own will and he bowed in obedience before God's will and he submitted his life to God's desires for him. I'm here to tell you that walking with God is denying self. So Amos is called by God to the difficult task. To the undesirable task and the unpleasant task of leaving his homeland in Judah to preach a harsh message of judgment to Israel. See, the sins of Israel are heat as high as heaven. That the sins are many and much. They have sins such as oppression of the poor, idolatry, deceit. Self-righteousness, arrogance, greed, materialism, and heartlessness. It, it, doesn't that sound like modern day time? Doesn't that sound like present day time? Doesn't it sound like the America that we live in today? To the people that have broken every aspect of their covenant relationship with God. But nevertheless, God's mercy and love are evident in his offer of deliverance if the people will only turn back to him. Yes. Yes. See, God graciously sends Amos as a reformer, as a revivalist to warn the people of their faith if they return, if they refuse to return to him. If we refuse to repent, if we refuse to abandon sin. But, the, but they reject his plea and the course of judgment could not be altered. So what are you saying? I'm saying that God is faithful to his word. That if God has promised to bless us for obedience, then he will indeed bless us. But if he's promised to curse us for disobedience, then God will indeed curse us. I'm here to tell you that when God gives us a warning, we must take heed to what God says. I'm here to tell you that God will not strike without a warning. The Bible said, but God who is rich in mercy. So God wants to show us mercy. He wants us to turn around. He wants us to come back. He said, it's not my will that it should perish. But the people felt that because they were God's chosen people, they could live how they wanted. Some of us believe that because we're saved, we can live how we want. So they flattered themselves thinking that they should enjoy God's fame while they crept with the enemy, while they live in wickedness. And God says, not so that two cannot walk together except they agree. I'm going to tell you, don't think your title is going to get you to heaven. And just because we have a sense of entitlement means nothing to God, but we have to be in agreement with God. I'm going to tell you that the only title that matters is servant. I remember think of the scripture when he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. He didn't say, well done, my good and faithful pastor. He didn't say, well done, my good and faithful bishop. Well done, my good and faithful apostle. No, uh, uh, um, the apostle. My, well done, my good and faithful deacon. My good and faithful first lady. My good and faithful usher. But he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. The most important position in the church is servant. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the people of Israel 
unknown to any other nation in history. Because of their unique privilege, their punishment would be greater. See, when privilege comes, accountability. And those of us that are in position, we are here to a higher standard. That to whom much is given, much is required. How could they walk with God when they were going in different directions? He said, why well, call me Lord and you won't do the things I say? Why well, call me Lord and you won't keep my commandments? Why well, call me Lord and you won't follow me? He said, why well, call me Lord and you won't worship me? In fact, you worship me with your mouth, but I don't have your heart. How can we walk with God and Satan at the same time? How can we move forward while looking backwards? He said we cannot serve two masters. We can't operate married to Jesus while being married to the world. He said do two people walk hand in hand if they don't go in the same place? Then how can two reach their destination if they don't have the same goal. You see, the closer you get to God, the further you get from the world. The closer you get to God, the louder His voice is. The closer you get to God, the more that it makes sense. That the more you walk in the Spirit, the harder it is to walk in the flesh. You see, in order to walk with God, there must be certain conditions that be met. So we have to know that God is in control. That God is in charge. Otherwise, we're not walking with God. See, we can't make up our own rules. We can't make up our own commandments. We can't make up our own laws. We cannot rewrite the Bible to fit our own desires. To walk with God is to ally oneself totally with his purpose. So again, in order, to, in order for there to be agreement between God and man, man must conform his mind to God's will. Man must fashion his mind to God's will. Man must shape his mind to God's will. Jesus prayed in the 17th chapter of John that we would be one just as he and his father were one. You see, Jesus never got out of position. Jesus never got out of formation. That Jesus was never involved in anything that wasn't God's will. That Jesus wasn't involved in any scandal. No. And as he was praying that we would experience the same unity they had. I'm going to tell you that we serve a oneness. God. And we can't be one without the Spirit of God. I said we serve a oneness God, and we can't be one without the Spirit of God. So walking with God is having peace with God. Amen. See, where there is no friendship, there can be no fellowship. See, walking with God is more meaningful than walking with anyone else. And walking with God is more valuable than walking with anything or anyone else. You see, walking with God will help us to step over what he used to trip us. I know we all can say that I remember certain things used to trip me. I remember I used to have trouble with certain things. But when I started walking with God, he helped me to step over. And he helped me to leave it alone. He helped me to turn away from it. So walking with God is a walk that lasts forever. It is a eternal walk. And while, while all other walks are temporary, meaning they won't last. 
Friends, I'm getting out of the way, but when God makes a covenant, his covenant is forever. And Israel couldn't expect that God should walk with them and show himself friendly to them and continue his favor with them while they walk contrary to him. And the same thing goes for us. And I just want to know, are you walking with God? I said the same thing goes for us. And then are you walking with God? Maybe when we learn to walk with God first, all our other relationships will fall in place. So how can man walk together until he has first learned to walk with God? The reason Christ could walk with us is because he was walking with God. Don't you ever think that it didn't get hard for Jesus? Don't you ever think that Jesus didn't want to throw in the towel? He said, Father, if it be up to you, then remove this bitter cup from me. But then he said, your will be done. I'm here to tell you that life ain't always easy. Life ain't always what it cracked up to be. But when you start walking with God, he makes it a little easier. He makes me to be able to walk beside the green waters. He leaves me beside the still waters. The enemy trying to fight me while I preach, but I'm gonna preach anyway. Yeah. So I'm gonna say it again. Walking, the reason Christ could walk with with God was would walk with us is because He was walking with God. Amen. And walking with God teaches us unity. Mm-hmm. Walking with God teaches us togetherness. Mm-hmm. And listen to what I'm about to say because here on earth all we have is division. All we have is disagreement. All we have is competition. All we have is rivalry. Do we have Democrat versus Republican? We have black versus white. We got Baptist versus Catholic. We got man versus woman. I heard Sister Freeman say it this morning, mother versus daughter. Father Versus son, we got gang versus gang. We got street versus street. We got the north versus the south. We got the east versus the west. We got Trump versus Biden. We got Trump versus Harris. Everywhere you turn around is nothing but the disagreement. But the Bible says, How can two walk together unless they agree? And as I leave you today, I want to put this on you. The only thing we should be fighting is the devil. I'm going to say that again. I said the only thing we should be fighting is the devil. The Bible said we are not against flesh and blood. That tells me that the enemy tries to put us all against each other and we forget about him. But I'm here to tell you our only enemy is the devil and we better learn to stick together, stick with God and get the devil under our feet. So may God bless you and may God keep you. He said how can two Walk together unless they agree. And first and foremost, I just want to tell you, although I related the scripture to man, Amos was talking about us walking with God. I'm going to tell you that again. We always try to relate it to man. But if I can't walk with God, then I can't walk with nobody else. But when I learn to walk with God, no matter if nobody else walks with me, I still got somebody that's closer than a friend, closer than a brother, closer than a mother, closer than a father. He can do what nobody else can do. I'm trying to tell you, we gotta learn to walk 